Hey guys, happy Sunday. Um, something I want to talk about that I brought up a while back, I would cover. I thought I got a few minutes here, just got done cleaning the kitchen. Why not talk about uh, the old dirty Balkan? Um, most of us have done it, uh, especially bodybuilders. When we first start out, uh, when I first started out, uh, I I actually did things right in my teen years, and then I met an idiot that I looked up to, um, and he ate like a disgusting pig in the off season, and then just basically lived on chicken up until shows. And I tried to repeat his uh, his methods, and eventually. Myself learned to start staying leaner in the off season and implementing some carbohydrates and fats into my diet. And once I finally started allowing myself carb ups and fats and staying leaner in the off season, I won my first show. And then as I, I hired some coaches, I started learning that it's got to be clean whole foods all the time and your body fat should not get out of control and you need to let yourself be hungry. The thing is, a lot of these younger guys, they see these bullshit Machiavelli motivational videos. These guys are stuffing all this food down their faces and everything else. The first thing they don't realize is these guys are so pumped full of drugs that it doesn't, you know, they they don't need to take advantage of like their natural insulin or GH levels or things like that. But still, that's where the bubble guts started coming from. We get a sludge buildup in our intestines. It's just literally this black fucking sludge. One of the best examples I've seen of it was uh, some hot dogs. There was this guy on this, I used to work at LP as a, as a mill rig. And on our metal rack, a guy we called Hubba, he was a human garbage disposal. He hung some hot dogs in a plastic bag there. It got forgot about in the backside of this metal rack. And one day we were cleaning the whole shop out. And we picked this bag up, and this sealed bag of hot dogs had turned into this black sludge. It's the same exact black sludge that eating all this crap builds up inside your intestines. Now imagine having this thick layer of black sludge in your intestines. How, not only are you going to get, like, are you becoming sick? Why do you think people end up with all this cancer and shit? On top of that, how much nutrients are you soaking through that? You know, so you gotta have you gotta have gut health for one. You're not gonna take nutrients up properly without it. Um, and a lot of guys they first start eating obviously, and by eating more they feel stronger and they put on size. But eventually, after a few weeks, that starts to fade because. They never let their blood sugars drop. They're constantly pounding food 24-7. Their stomach flora is fucked. It eventually just becomes, they're not digesting things properly. Um, you can't even force feed like you used to. You're full all the fucking time. And then um, from your blood sugars always being high, your insulin sensitivity drops. Once your insulin sensitivity starts dropping, you're less anabolic. You, when you're when you're hungry, the ghrelin helps you start releasing growth hormone, and your insulin sensitivity goes up. Your pancreas gets a break; you get a buildup of insulin, and then when you eat actual, you know, protein, healthy fats, and some carbs that are full of nutrients, not just fucking greens, you your body uptakes all that really well, and you're anabolic. So. If you're, if you're the point where your insulin receptors are down, you're constantly force feeding yourself, your blood sugars never change, the ghrelin doesn't ever get released, um, these sorts of things, you eventually become less and less anabolic. And this is where guys just start getting fatter. The scale's going up, but their strength isn't going up. They don't have the appetite anymore. Um, so at first, you'll see these guys jump on a bunch of gear and like just start shoveling shit in their face. And they think, oh yeah, I'm just going to bulk. And they always have this weight in their mind. I'm going to bulk up to 280 and then I'm going to cut down to, you know. What the fuck is that? Like, 
why don't you just slowly grow into your your lean 250 you want to be you know um and then you're not going to be like you're not going to get fat up to 280 and cut down to lean 250 you're going to be 280 and by the time most guys can't even diet that well They're, they they just don't they don't have what it takes but you're gonna you're gonna lose literally 10 15 pounds of muscle coming down and and it, there's nothing you can do about it because all you you just all you're focused on is is losing weight your body's sick and everything else so that's where the dirty balkan is crap like it, you know i i started doing off seasons and yeah in eight months you might only gain 15 pounds but then you diet down and realize 10 of it was fucking muscle you know because then you can eat more into the show and you put on a pound or two of muscle in your in your few months that you prepped and that pound or two of muscle is going to help burn five pounds of fat off. So by building muscle, muscle burns fat. So if we always focus on not getting fat and building muscle, we're going to stay lean and eat enough to build the muscle. Once you're putting on body fat, you're eating too many energies as it is. Certain ones, like there's certain ones you can sneak in to up your and you know how anabolic you are your metabolic how metabolic you are but in the grand scheme of things as soon as you're putting on body fat you're over that limit now now that is not going to make you put on muscle any faster okay so pushing the scale up just makes us fat asses and and i did that when i was younger um it was disgusting like when I was 21 years old, 20, 21, I remember before I'd go to bed every night, I'd put a scoop of ice cream in a blender with some protein powder, a Snickers bar, some eggs. And I would go to bed and like my girlfriend, I couldn't even have sex with her because I was, I would have thrown up. And luckily I was logging. So I was, I was running a chainsaw all day long in the woods and jumping in and out of a skitter and, you know, trudging around in knee deep snow all day long. And then go into the gym. So I was able to not turn into a complete tub of shit. But same thing, if I think back on it, all those years ago, when I first started eating is when I made all these gains. And after a while, I just, you know, I was just holding on. Um, and over the years, I slowly, you know, started eating cleaner and cleaner and staying leaner through the and, and actually eating more into prep things like that and that's when i started winning competitions so and even you know like i said strongman you look at marius pujanowski or you look at this fucking tub of shit uh eddie hall you know yeah pujanowski would have ran circles around eddie hall's fat ass so the not only is it is healthier you're going to live a longer happier life and you're going to be able to do these things longer um this is a this is a lifestyle it's not a sprint you know um the, the as soon as you can't do it anymore you're going to be massively depressed and that's why i, I talk about we got to go back to our roots and eating whole foods like human beings are meant to we're supposed to eat some organ meats we're supposed to eat vegetables we're supposed to eat seasonal fruits and berries and nuts and things like that things that were accessible uh the processed grains and all that stuff just the same as they grain feed cows and they're unhealthy and fat they do it to both like that's what we're doing to people we're basically putting them out to pasture for slaughter you know so um I, I, it's unfortunate. I, I wish I knew as much as I do now when I was younger, but there's nothing I can do about that now. I can instill it in people that are younger now or, you know, even help older people. A lot of people lately have been helping them a lot with, with the health issues uh, like um, cholesterol and blood pressure and blood sugars and um, all sorts of different things like that and I'm, I'm amazed at the amount of drugs that doctors put these people on and like low potassium is directly correlated to high blood sugars 
but they put them on blood pressure meds that strip their calcium, so their blood sugars go up, but then they're on statins for the cholesterol. And then the cholesterol, st that the statins for the cholesterol drive blood sugars up. Then they're pretty soon they're on metformin and insulin and everything else. Like everything they give these people has this counter effect that they got to give them another drug for. And by cleaning up one guy I'm working with, for example, I clean, I clean up his diet, his blood sugars start dropping. His blood pressure goes down. I pull him off these diuretics. His blood sugars drop even lower. We get him off of these um, cholesterol drugs. His HDL now is up, which then counterbalances the LDL. And the... Um, he doesn't have to take, you know, he doesn't have to even check his blood sugars anymore. Now he says his appetite is out of control. He's eating more and he's losing weight. So it, it's that simple. And that, that's what drives me nuts about it. It's like balancing on a BOSU ball releases growth hormone. It's like, yeah, it seems a little silly, but it does. It works. So um, let's take advantage of these practices, you know. Uh so my word of advice to anybody, Dirty Balkan, don't do it. Right before some sort of a, a, a competition like bodybuilding, we carb up, okay? And what I would do then was like white rice, and I'd sneak some of the, the no high fructose corn syrup um, pie filling in there and things like that. But this is a special situation where like carb loading for a specific reason for a day. And we still got to be reasonable about it. Um, at, and then to keep the sodium in there and things like that. And then like strength events, if somebody was going to, let's say a power lifter or something, uh, the carb load, there's no reason we have to eat donuts and heavy whipping cream. It's literally just the saturated fats that keep you full and in carbs and things like that. You're going to be way healthier if you're eating lots of, you know, eating some rice and some, some, some sugars from some fruit, keep your sodium in there. You can't uptake carbs without salt. There's nothing super anabolic about pop tarts, and you know, like when your when your sodium levels are up and your and your glycogen's full and your water is all in your muscles, you do feel stronger. But it's it's just the strength of like a hydraulic uh, pumping of the muscles. Your true strength, even if you're a little bit flatter, is still going up. Once you carb up, you're gonna be stronger yet. So. Um, and then in strength sports, as we stay leaner, we're lighter and we place better because we're lighter and we lift the same amount. There's a bigger gap between our body weight and the amount we lift. So being a tub of shit does not have an advantage in that sense. Um, so, it, you know, like keep those things in mind. It's, I, you know, I realize that like temporarily guys feel stronger, but eventually that's going to drop. So you got, you know, some guys like even back in the 50s, Larry Scott, who was, uh, I believe, was Mr. Olympia, like one of the first Mr. Olympias. Um, he was well known for having massive arms, whatever. He was back in the 50s, probably early 60s. Um, he fasted one day a week because he found that it helped all of his digestion, things like that. He stayed leaner and he was healthier. Um and, you know, I can keep going on and on about, you know, like the intermittent fasting. If you're doing it the same time every day, your body's going to catch you. But there's times if you're not hungry, don't fucking eat. If you're not training that day, eat less. Just eat a couple meals. Let yourself be fucking hungry. It ain't going to, you're not going to go into starvation mode in 12 hours. It ain't going to fucking happen. So, um, if anything, you're, you're resetting your body to be more anabolic and then, your body sometimes has to take a step back to take two steps forward because your body gets used to things and sometimes you got to back off to go forward. Okay. Have a good day.